Hello, hello, hello. I did not forget about you all. I wanted to make sure that I jumped on today. I know we have Bible study this evening, but I still wanted to jump on and uh, pray with you all and discuss a little bit about the topics that we are focusing on today for the third day of the Next Level 2019 Fast. Um, today's topic is um, t prayer focus is wisdom, clarity, guidance, and discernment. Wisdom, clarity, guidance, and uh, discernment. Uh, for many of you, uh, I'm sure that uh, wisdom is a huge topic for you as you go into your new year and plan all of the different things that God has for you to do. Um, clarity is always a major issue um, when we're asking God for instruction and we're always saying, God, give me more clarity on this. Show me exactly what you want me to do. Guidance, of course, is always um, necessary because we desire for God to um, guide us and order our steps as as we go throughout this year and discernment. Uh, many people, when they hear the word discernment, they automatically assume that it is a spiritual thing and that it is a spiritual word. Um, I often hear people say, um, I have a very, I have a gift of discernment or I have a discerning spirit. But there are a lot of people who are strong in discernment who aren't spiritual at all. Discernment isn't always a spiritual thing. Discernment means that you have the ability to examine or investigate or inquire on a specific topic. So it doesn't always necessarily mean that you're super spiritual because you have discernment. But what we desire is spiritual discernment. We don't desire the discernment of man that uses the wisdom and the, um, the knowledge of man, but we desire to have more spiritual discernment for this, the, the ability to discern uh, spiritually comes from the Holy Spirit. Spirit. And so in the same way that wisdom comes from the Holy Spirit, so does discernment. In the word of God in James chapter 3, uh, verses 13 through 17, it says, Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your heart, do not boast and lie against the truth. The wisdom does not, this wisdom does not descend from above, but it is earthly, sensual, demonic. For where envy and self seeking exists, confusion and every evil thing are there. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield full of mercy and good fruits without partiality and without hypocrisy. Um, and so with wisdom, the wisdom of God, they said in this scripture here that the wisdom of God is going to produce peace, that it is going to yield good fruit. It's going to be merciful and it's not going to be uh, hypocritical. And so one of the things that we battle with when we're seeking God for wisdom is we battle with the idea that, um, uh, the thing that I want to do uh, is going to manifest in a certain way. We battle with the idea that it has to look a certain way, but it says here that God's wisdom is always going to be peaceable. So if your idea or your decision that you claim is from God, that you claim is wisdom from God, is an answer from God, involves you acting crazy, then nine times out of ten, it's not the wisdom of God because the word of God tells us that the wisdom of God is peaceable, that is gentle. And many of us as believers, we try to condone behavior by saying, well, God told me that this person was saying this and God told me to do this to this person. But the wisdom of God is not going to cause you to contradict his word. The wisdom of God will not contradict his word. So whatever instruction that God gives you is going to be in alignment with his word. And so you have to be consistent with the word of God. And that's how you're going to measure if it's God talking or if it's your own, uh, your own motivation in your own mind. Hey, Mark. Hey, babe. Um, I'm going to continue doing this broadcast so everybody who's at work cannot see this right now. You can go back and watch the replay. Um, but the wisdom of God is going to always be um, in alignment with the will of God and with his word. It says that where there is envy and self-seeking and confusion, that's earthly wisdom. 
So if your decision making causes confusion, if it's only to please you and it does not profit other people and it does not positively impact other people, then that's not that that's not the will of God. That's not the wisdom of God. Your wis the wisdom of God is not going to be selfish. It's not going to be a selfish decision. And sometimes we try to condone our selfishness by saying, this is the will of God. This is what God has told me to do. But I'm telling you right now, if it's the wisdom of God, it's not going to be self-serving to where it's putting you in a good situation and it's, uh, and it's putting everyone else in a compromising position. Amen. And so the wisdom of God is not self-serving. Another po uh, powerful scripture is in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, and it talks about the wisdom of God, how it comes through the spirit. He says in verse 13, he says, these things we speak not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual things. And so there is a er, there is an earthly wisdom and there is a godly wisdom. Uh, an earthly wisdom can can be obtained through study it can be attained through education but God's wisdom will teach you things that you have never studied God's wisdom will give you an insight into things that you have never experienced the wisdom of God if if we look in the Greek definition it's the word is Sophia and it means insight skill intelligence uh, a sophistication the art of using wisdom and so God will give you a level of intelligence that you have not seen study to attain. He will give you a, a level of knowledge that you have not practiced and you have not experienced. You have Sometimes we gain a, a wisdom just because we're observant in the world and in life and we learn and we read a lot and we watch a lot of educational things and that will help you to obtain natural wisdom, but it will not help you obtain godly wisdom. Godly wisdom has the ability to look beyond what you study and what you've seen. You can have a, a knowledge about how to do a specific thing that you have never even encountered before. And so that's the benefit of godly wisdom is that it is not limited to your experiences and your study. It is not limited to what you have seen. Some people will be at a disadvantage in this life because they have not been raised in an environment where they've been um, around a lot of culture and they haven't uh, had a lot of education. But there are some people who have been raised in those environments that still have more wisdom because their wisdom is from God. And so he said in 1 Corinthians, he says, um, we compare the spiritual things with the spiritual. He says, but the natural man does not receive the things of the spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. And this is where we go back to discernment. When we're praying for discernment, not only are we praying for God to give us an awareness of things that are going on in our lives and in insight um, and an ability to investigate things in the spirit but also we need discernment so that we can discern when w there is wisdom taking place when w we can identify wisdom some people have people pouring into their lives wisdom all of the time but they don't have the ability to discern wisdom because they're trying to use their natural understanding to discern spiritual things but he says that a foolish person uh, cannot discern hey Lashon and the foolish person cannot discern spiritual things. When you're using your natural intellect and your natural understanding, the spiritual things will be over your head. You'll miss it. You won't be able to uh, understand it. You won't be able to value it. This is why the word of God tells us not to cast our pearls before swine. Because people who are in the world and people who operate in worldly mentalities and thoughts and knowledge and wisdom will not value the spiritual wisdom that you are giving them. They will not value um, the, the effort that you're taking for them because they cannot discern that it's valuable. Some of y'all are going to learn to stop wasting your time with people who don't value you and don't value your input. That's a hard lesson that I had to learn, especially um, as a spiritual leader. You have a lot of people that come to you and ask you for advice, but then don't value your advice. You have a lot of people that come to you and ask you for wisdom, but then don't value your wisdom. Why? Because they have no, they, they lack discernment. 
They lack spiritual discernment. They don't even realize what's happening. They don't even realize that this is valuable information. The Bible says that wisdom is worth far more than rubies. It's so valuable that it is considered a treasure. But people who lack spiritual discernment, they will not notice that it is wisdom. They won't even realize that you're giving them information that is beyond education, that is beyond what you can study, that it is straight from heaven. They won't see that. And so when people don't see that, they don't treasure it and they don't value your time. They don't value your energy. They don't value your effort. One of the things that you have to do in this season as you're praying for God to, dis to strengthen your spiritual discernment is to use that discernment to understand when, when and where and what and who to put your energy into when should you put your energy into it where should you put your energy who should you put your energy into what should you put your energy into what should you put your time into those that's one of the reasons why we need discernment because we need to understand how to properly steward our time and our and our uh, energy and our resources because sometimes you think that you're making a good investment in something and it's not a good investment. So we need to be able to discern things in the spirit, not just in the natural. Some of you all have great discernment in the natural, but God is calling us to raise up our spiritual discernment to where we're not always thinking in our flesh and in our natural minds but we're starting to see in the spirit and hear God better and, uh, and, and be able to discern when and where and what and how to do certain things. And that pairs, discernment pairs with your wisdom. It's not something that operates um, in, in, independently from one another, but wisdom and discernment work together. And then when we talk about guidance, the word of God tells us in John 16 and 3, he says, however, when he, the spirit of truth comes... The spirit of truth has come. He will guide you into all truth. He will guide you into all truth. Many of us lack guidance because we are not allowing the Holy Spirit to direct us. We're not allowing the Holy Spirit to give us the instruction that we need for this next season or assignment or thing that we're um, thinking about or praying about. We're still trying to work it out in our own minds. And, and if you are trying to work everything out in your own mind, I promise you, you're going to talk yourself out of a lot of things that God has called you to do. Because your mind, your natural mind cannot understand how certain things are going to be done. Your natural mind can't figure out everything that is going to uh, happen and take place and, and what you need to do and when you need to do it. Your natural mind is not built to be able to handle all of that. And so when we begin to put all of... Um, our, 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 our processes and, and, and steps and all of that just in our natural mind without allowing the Holy Spirit to guide us. Oftentimes we feel overwhelmed and we feel frustrated and we feel like this is impossible. But it is only through the Holy Spirit that you can receive the guidance from on high. You receive the guidance from God to know exactly what he needs you to do and when he needs you to do it. I promise you, I have been there. Hey, Janine. And I've been there where um, God has given me instruction and I was just like, you know what? My natural mind started to kick in and I started to calculate, okay, I'm going to need this and, and I need this much time and I need this much money and I just don't see how all of this is adding up. Good afternoon. Hey, Keisha. Um, I don't see how all of this is adding up. I don't see how this is going to work, but it is only when I take off my natural and I put on the spiritual lenses and I look through the Holy Spirit and I say, okay, God, just guide me by your spirit. I'm overthinking this thing. I don't know about you, but I'm an overthinker. I have the ability to try to dig too much into it, to try to put too much into it. And if I can't figure it out and plan it all out, I'm feeling overwhelmed and I'm feeling frustrated. And so I had to learn how to allow God to guide me through his spirit. And the word of God tells us that the spirit also will show us things to come. So the same spirit that guide you, guides you will also begin to give you insight into the future and into different decisions that need to be made into things that you have to be aware of. This is why it's so important for us to let this Holy Spirit 
spirit guide us and not our flesh and not our natural minds because our minds are limited in what we uh, can see and what we can do. Our minds only go so far. They have a, a boundary, but the Holy Spirit has no boundary. And when you allow God to guide you, I promise you that your life will change. I started uh, to just depend on God and I allowed him to show me things unfold as I walked rather than um, needing to see it first before I stepped. But the Holy Spirit will guide you even when you can't see the next step. And as you step, God will allow things to start to open up for you and appear and doors to open and opportunities to open up and finances to come. God just needs you to walk in faith. And that comes from us being guided by the Holy Spirit. And so uh, today our focus is, is, is God, give us your wisdom. I don't want my wisdom. I don't want natural wisdom. I don't want uh, just wisdom that can be found in the book, but I want your wisdom from on high. I want your wisdom that is going to be able to give me insight into things I've never learned. I've never studied. I've never seen. Some of you feel like you're at a disadvantage because you may not have a certain degree or you might not have certain job experience, but God's wisdom has the ability to help you thrive in a situation that you have not even been trained in, that you have not been educated in. Don't count yourself out just because you may not have what someone else has because the wisdom of God will open up doors for you and give you favor just as he did Daniel just as he did Joseph he will open up doors of favor for you because of his wisdom now uh, when you look at Nebuchadnezzar he had all of these other um, um, philosophers around him and and the priests of their gods around him and no one could figure out certain things but um but God sent Daniel to be able to give him insight to his dreams and give instruction and sent Joseph to give instruction about the fast and so God will give you wisdom beyond what you understand amen and so um I'm praying for you as we go into prayer I'm praying for you that you value you the wisdom of God. I'm praying for you that you receive the clarity that you need in this season for um, the specific assignments and tasks that God has shown you. Because sometimes God can show you a glimpse of something, but you're like, I need more detail, God. Can you give me a little bit more clarity on this subject? It's a little fuzzy right now. I know kind of the big picture, but can you uh, kind of pinpoint some things? And sometimes we need more clarity in order to move. And then I'm also going to be praying over your ability not just to receive guidance but to allow God to guide you God wants to guide us but we have to allow him to guide us we have to submit and surrender our will to him so that he can then uh, guide us with the Holy Spirit God is trying to guide us in many situations but we fight him and there's a tug of war of power because of our fear and our uncertainty and our lack of faith that we begin to fight with God but I pray that you surrender your will so that God can guide you and I also am going to be praying that God strengthen your spiritual discernment so that you will know um, who uh, to trust for some of you that is a big thing learning to trust again um, so that you will also know what things to put your energy and time and talent and resources in in this season and also that you can be able to discern when something is the wisdom of God or when something is you even for those of you who have spiritual gifts and you're growing in your spiritual gifts you need to increase in your discernment to be able to understand if it's the spirit of God speaking or if it's your mind speaking or if it's the enemy speaking and so we need to increase uh, and, and increase in our discernment so let's go to the Lord in prayer Heavenly Father we just thank you on today for being so gracious to us oh God for allowing us to see another day let us not take for granted um, the ability to wake up the ability to have uh, the activity of our limbs and our minds oh God let us not take for granted uh, the favor that you have shown us and the mercy that you have shown us Lord for your mercies are new every morning and we don't want to um 
ignore or not acknowledge how merciful you are and how gracious and loving you are to us, Lord. We just thank you for loving on us when we were unlovable. We thank you, God, for your forgiveness. We thank you, Lord, that even when we mess up, even during this fast, oh God, if anyone slips up, if anyone has a mess up in what they eat, Lord, we thank you, Father, that you are gracious and you are forgiving, that you look at our heart and you look beyond just our actions. You look beyond our exterior, but you look down to the very core of our being and we thank you that you are that type of God that you are not like man that you don't judge us by our outside and you don't simply judge us by religious acts oh God but you uh, look and examine our heart posture father so we thank you Lord for loving us and we thank you God for continuing to excel us through this process through this um, fast oh God we thank you that you are elevating us and you are taking us to the next level we don't want to be the same person that we used to be in 2018 or in 2017. We don't want to be the same person that we were even yesterday. We want to be in a process of continued evolution and continued growth for we know whatever doesn't grow it dies father and we want to continue to grow spiritually, naturally, intellectually, in our emotional ability, in our heart father. Help us to evolve. Help us to advance oh God. So we thank you, Lord, that you will honor our desire in this fast, Father, that you will answer prayers, that you will work miracles, that you will open up doors and opportunities, that you will increase strength and faith, oh God, that you will increase courage, Lord Jesus. We thank you, oh God, on today that, um, today, Father, that you will increase us in wisdom. For your word tells us that if anyone lacks wisdom that we are to ask of you and you will give it liberally, Lord. If we ask in faith, Father, you will dispense more wisdom to us. Lord, we desire wisdom to be able to know the things beyond what we've experienced and beyond what we have studied. I thank you, Father God, that you begin to grant wisdom to your children who are in specific jobs. Father, when they get promoted to jobs that they feel that they, that are beyond their ability when they desire jobs and careers that are beyond their experience and their studies oh God we thank you that you have the ability to give them a level of wisdom that puts the hiring managers at all Lord God that they begin to uh, be shocked by the by how well they can function in a certain situation we thank you that when you give us wisdom we will never be caught off guard we will never be um, vulnerable by a lack of experience, Father, because you will continue to show us what to do. You will guide us through the power of your Holy Spirit. I thank you, Father God, that the wisdom of the Spirit is discerned by the Spirit, and you are able to reveal the deep things of God and the things of the Spirit to us by your Spirit, that you are able to show us um, your plans in the future through your Holy Spirit. So I thank you, Father, that we have wisdom for these decisions that we have to make on this year, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that when we make these decisions, that they will be decisions that glorify you, that they will be decisions that bless other people. We will not be people that are self-seeking. We will not be people that are selfish, Lord God, but we will lean upon your wisdom that is peaceable, that is gentle, that is long-suffering, oh God, that is full of mercy, and that is without hypocrisy. Let us bear fruits of this wisdom, of of godly wisdom, of wisdom from on high that will advance not just us, but will advance your kingdom. We thank you, Father God, that as we seek this wisdom, Lord, that we will treasure it and we will value it. Let us not squander it on foolish things. Let us not squander it to get opportunities that you do not desire for us to have, but allow your wisdom to walk us into our destiny and into the path of our purpose. And we thank you, Lord, that as we um, pray and ask for uh, clarity, Lord God, that you begin to allow us to see through the eyes of the spirit that we can see deep into the future, remove all cloudiness, remove all uncertainty, remove all insecurity and fear in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I thank you, Father God, that as we show faith and as we show courage, you will give us more clarity that you will allow us to see as we walk in obedience. And I thank you, Father, that whoever is making major decisions in this season, in this season and they need more 
more details and more understanding on the matter. I thank you, Father, that you will grant that, that you will give them the insight that they need. You will send them warnings and you will send them uh, information that will help them to clarify their decisions, Father. I thank you even now, you will send them messages through people that will help them clarify the decision that even in your word, we receive clarity as we apply the word to our lives. It will give us clarity for each decision that we have to make. I thank you, Father God, that through your spirit, we receive guidance. Oh God, your spirit is what orders our steps for your word tells us to lean not on our own understanding, but in all our ways to acknowledge you and you will direct our path. Help us not to lean on what we know. Help us not to lean on earthly wisdom. Help us not to lean on our own minds and our own wills. Help us not to lean on our own intelligence, but let us lean on you, Father, because we know that you are stable and you are strong, for you are strong enough to uphold us and you are strong enough to protect us and you are strong enough to shield us, for you are our shield and our glory. And we thank you on today, Father God, that when we uh, when we allow you to guide us, that we will never go down the wrong path. When we allow you to guide us, we will never make mistakes and we will never fall into the pit, but it is only by your guidance that we can stay on the path of righteousness. It is only by your guidance that we can reach our destiny and walk in our purpose. We cannot reach our purpose in our own will and in our own way. Help us to move self out of the way. Allow us to surrender our flesh and our mind to you so that you can take the steering wheel, oh God. Help us to stop fighting you in this season because of things that we don't understand or because of things that we fear. But I thank you, Lord, that a spirit of surrender is going to go forth over the people. I thank you, Lord God, that a spirit of a posture of worship uh, is going to come uh, uh, upon the people. I thank you, Father God, that we will not lean on our own understanding, that we will not be overly confident in ourselves, oh God, for our your word tells us to be confident in you. For your word says, they that trust in you will not be put to shame. They that hope in you will not be brought to shame. Lord, we know that when we place our hope in you and when we put our trust in you, that everything always works out okay, Father, that everything always uh, advances, that we produce good fruit, Lord God. So I thank you, Father, that we will not have a tug of war any longer, but this will be the year that we finally realize that when we humble ourselves under your mighty hand, you will exalt us in due season, that when we humble ourselves under your hand, that we are protected and we are shielded. It is only when we rise up in our own understanding that we expose ourselves to warfare. But I thank you, Father, that we will stay under your covering, that we will stay in the strong tower, in the stronghold, Father God, of your protection and your loving arms, Lord. I thank you, Father God, that you will give us more discernment, that we can be able to identify when you're speaking and when you're not, that we can be able to identify when it is your wisdom and our wisdom, that we be able to even identify spirits, oh God, that are working in the atmosphere. Give us the gift of the discerning of spirits, Father, to be able to identify what is working even within us, for it is not enough discernment it's not truly discernment if we can't even identify our own problems and our own issues and our own struggles and bondage. But I thank you, Lord, that the spirit of discernment is raising up in your people and we will even be able to work on ourselves. Hallelujah. That we will be focused on ourselves and improving ourselves, oh God, not just pointing out the flaws of others, but Lord, help us to remove the log from our own eye. I thank you, Father, that your discernment will begin to show us the areas that we need to perfect, the areas that we need to grow in, and the areas that we need deliverance in. I thank you, Father, that you give us the courage to even face it. I thank you, Lord, that you give us the courage to begin to work on it, that you give us the strength, Father God, not to pull away from the process, but to endure the process, oh God, for there is greater ahead of us, Father. So I thank you, Lord God, that you give us the ability to examine in the spirit. I thank 
you, Father. You give us insight in the spirit, that you give us discernment in the spirit that can see clearly, oh God, that can see clearly in the spirit. And I declare that this will not be, the, uh, that the last season will be the last season that we don't value what you placed in our hands. But Lord, we will be able to discern when you are giving us favor and when you have opened up doors for us. Because God said in some past seasons, God has shown favor to you and you have not even been able to discern that it was the favor of God. And so you squandered it and you didn't notice that it was the favor of God until it had already passed and until you already lost the opportunity, until you already broke the relationship. But I declare in this season that we will have such a strong level of discernment that we will be able to properly steward every favor and every ounce, ounce of wisdom and every blessing and every opportunity. I thank you, Father God, that we will be able to see that it's from you and we will treasure it and we will use it properly. And not only will we use it properly, but we will allow that seed to bear fruit. We will allow that seed to produce a harvest. I thank you, Father, that we will not eat our seeds in this season, oh God, but we will bury them and we will allow it to produce a harvest because we will discern that it is a seed from you. We will discern that it is meant to produce something for us. We will discern that it is valuable, God. We will not squander your gifts and we will not squander your opportunities, oh God, but we will treasure and we will multiply in Jesus' mighty name. I thank you, Father, that you are giving us a level of wisdom and discernment to where we will be able to maximize every opportunity that by the end of this year, we will see the seeds that we have sown produce harvest in Jesus mighty name. We will see the seeds that we have sown not only be a blessing to our lives, but be the, a blessing to other people's lives. I thank you right now, father, that we will be more aware in this season. We will be more aware, spiritually aware. We will not be so naturally minded that we will miss what's happening in the spirit, but you will give us a level of balance like we have never experienced where we will be able to be balanced spiritually and naturally to be able to know what's going on in the spirit and still function intentionally, purposefully, and effectively in the natural. We thank you, Father God, that you are taking us higher. We thank you, Lord, that you are taking us to the next level. We thank you, Lord, that you are advancing your people. And not only are you advancing us, oh God, but you are giving us the power of influence. We thank you, Father, for a new level of influence right now because of the wisdom that you are giving us. We will have wisdom that is going to open up doors of influence and establishment right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We thank you. We give you praise and we thank you, Lord, that this is the year of establishment. This is the time where you are going to set us in our rightful places, where you are going to stabilize us, where you are going to grow us, when you are going to favor us, when you are going to make our names great, when you are going to expose the people to the great things that you are doing in us, oh God. So we thank you, Father, for all that you're doing and all that you're going to do. I pray that you continue to strengthen your people as they fast, that you continue to grow them spiritually, Lord God, that they begin to to hear more clearly and see more clearly. We thank you, oh God, for all that you're doing and all that you plan to do in our lives. We thank you and we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I pray that this prayer was a blessing to you. Um, uh, don't forget to join us this evening for the Wednesday night pour. It is our first Wednesday night pour of 2019. So make sure that you're in the house as we continue our series into the deep, the art of worship. I'm really excited about this series because I understand how important, important worship is and how many doors that it can open up for you when you understand how to live a lifestyle of worship. So join us tonight at 715 
15. Corporate prayer begins at 715. And then Bible study begins immediately following that. And also, if you're in the Dallas area and you're looking for a place to worship on Sunday, join us Sunday at 1015 uh, for our Sunday encounter at the Place of Liberty. For any other information about Liberate Church, please see our Facebook page. Or you can go follow us on Instagram. Or you can visit our website at www.liberatedallas.com. But you all have a wonderful, blessed day. I love you all the love of Christ. And Apostle will be on tomorrow. Y'all have a great day. Bye-bye.